Hey y'all, welcome back to the Fed Up Black Creator Podcast. This is episode three, and you know how I do over here. We're gonna jump right into it. So, um, <laughs> can we please stop silent watching? Like, seriously. Um, yeah, I I think that within our community, and I can only speak for us, I think we are some of the biggest silent watchers that there are. I mean, somebody will have. <clears throat> 20,000 views on a video and five comments. And I'm not talking about when people buy views and stuff like that. We know people do it. I mean, like, no, their subscribers watched all the way through. They had great, like, you know, watch time retention, but nobody left a comment. Um, I don't understand that. If you want to really support a black creator, you need to be commenting on their videos, even if you're just leaving an emoji Because it greatly helps us continue to make content. And yes, pay the bills. It's time for us to also stop pretending like we're not on this platform to monetize. We are on this platform to monetize. Even if you are on this platform just for fun, at some point you will meet the monetization, you know, requirements. And your channel will be monetized unless you just don't go forth with that effort. But most people will. So let's stop pretending. So y'all know what helps creators make more money. So why don't y'all do it? Like y'all, I'm so serious. I'm 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 really not joking because the moment I start watching a fellow black creator's content, I'm leaving a comment because I know what that does for their channel. I think like we say we need to support each other more, but we don't practice it. And that's very wild to me. You know, I, I just it, uh, it's very wild to me. But also like that's really not today's topic. But I wanted to start the episode with that because silent watching is really frustrating me. Like, not even just for my own channel, but for other people's channels. Like, I don't get it. You can't leave a comment and just say, watching, supporting, here, smiley face emoji, heart emoji, like anything, the littlest thing. When you look at these other creators' comment sections, they're full. 2K comment, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, whatever. Like, and I'm talking about even more specifically for new creators, right? For young black creators or just, you know, whatever. I'm not going to say young. Black creators who are newer to the platform, you know, might have just uploading content. You know, maybe they have a good 500 subs or even 100 subs. But like, excuse me, I'm going to need all 100 of you to leave a comment. Or I'm going to need however many of y'all are watching the video at that time to leave a comment. And you know what's so disappointing? It's the smallest of things. It's the smallest of actions that make the largest impact, but we still don't do it. And then we complain. Very confusing to me. But anyway, let's really get into this episode's topic, right? Because I, I don't want to go off about silent watching anymore because I do mention it every episode because it really grinds my gears because it's, it's one of the smallest things we can do as a community that would have such a large impact. But what are we doing? Not doing it. Mm-mm-mm. Anyway, I want us to gatekeep now. Um... <laughs> It's time. We need to start telling people no when they try to profit from our content. No, they cannot be invited to the cookout because they shouldn't even know we're having a cookout. Like, what is wrong with y'all? Okay, like, child, uh, please, please. We have to stop letting everyone profit from our hard work and doing the bare minimum. So I know that folks feel that Black Girl Luxury is taking over on this platform And you know what I find super interesting? Super interesting. The black girl luxury content. Let's say that. Because you say movement. The black girl luxury content, right? This spike in black girl luxury content on this platform, on YouTube specifically, is one of the few times I feel that YouTube is starting to push black content. Have y'all noticed that at all? Is that just me? Have y'all noticed? Is that just me? I know this. I have. And um, I think that's interesting that when we really lean into the material world of it all, which, mind you, is not what black creators were doing before, because trust and believe some of your faves have always been living that black girl luxury lifestyle. They just weren't vlogging about it or making content around it because that was not the popular thing to do. And at some point on YouTube that was even frowned upon to be like, look, I'm wealthy because of YouTube. People like did not like that. They were like, bitch, they're relatable. Um, you know, and the few times that those black creators did, you know, show us the wealth they've acquired from YouTube, 
um annoyingly so they got accused of scamming which is really upsetting because it's like no like they're really just doing numbers on youtube and elsewhere like that's another thing i don't get like why <laughs> why can't we really believe that some people really are just pulling in that sort of revenue and numbers from youtube especially creators who were on youtube before youtube changed their whole like monetization thing like you used to be able to bring in money 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 you still can but the you know the parameters were different but what i really wanted to get into today was that you know i don't want y'all to feel pressured into making that kind of content black girl luxury content at all or really any sort of content right i don't want you to begin to box yourself in for the algorithm at all um i just received my first patreon member and i actually cried about it i did because um I don't have a trillion subs, right? I don't have a trillion subs. I'm almost at 3,000 subs. And the fact that someone is willing to pay $7 a month for exclusive content um, is amazing to me. It, because it means that, you know, that saying people are like, even if I just inspire one person, like I've done enough. But the thing about me is like, I really feel that way. It's just one person take something away from my content that is beneficial to them, I'm, I'm grateful. And so to see that somebody has to such an extent, they're like, yeah, I'm willing to actually pay money um, and get even more exclusive content. Um, you know, when I can talk about things you can't talk about on YouTube because YouTube be like, what is that? Flagged. Um, but I say all this to say that you don't need to niche down and box yourself in to profit from this platform. If you took a look at my channel, I have not niched down. I don't make only one or two sorts of videos uh you really couldn't say my channel is this that and the third like my channel consists of my interest at that time i'm a human being like i'm an ever evolving growing person my content is going to be about what it's going to be about at that time you know that's that's really the best way that i can describe it my content is really going to be about what it's going to be about about at that time, what I'm interested in, what I'm exploring. Um, I will say this. There are some constants on my channel. So I would say, instead of niching down, what I think would work in the favor of Black creators would be to have constants on your channel instead of trying to niche down. I think why a lot of people come on the platform and then leave the platform so quickly Um Yes, one is because they thought like they're not seeing this, you know, immediate overnight success. But I, two, two, I also think it's because they are trying to niche down, right? Like they are trying to find one thing that like works for them and just like bank everything on that. And I think especially when you are starting off on YouTube, I don't mm -mm, I don't think you need to niche down. First of all, I think niching down is what's going to box you in way too early on and then you're going to get frustrated because once you start to get those numbers and you get those views, then you're like, "Oh, let me start doing the content." I really like then everybody's like, "Oh, girl, we are not interested. I did not come here for that." Um I'll say this. One of the reasons why I believe that I am continuing to experience a, a really good, constant, steady growth on my channel, once I started uploading consistently, of course, because before that, I was, you know, getting like one subscriber a day. Now that I've been consistently uploading, I have somewhat of an upload schedule. And because I have constants on my channel, like I have certain, we could say series, right, on my channel that people come to expect, um... I'm gaining subscribers at a much more steady pace because people know on certain days they can expect certain kind of content or just they know within the month, right, I will have posted this podcast or I will have made a video essay about this, whatever. I'm also very active in my community tab. I think that's really important to me. I think the moment that you get access to the community tab, you need to be utilizing it like it is your Twitter. I am not joking. You need to be talking on your community tab as often as possible. Because trust me, you'd be surprised. Maybe y'all won't because we all kind of have seen the comments. Like YouTube, right, isn't always notifying your subscribers even when they turn on post notifications, right? Even when they are excited and want to be there for the upload or the premiere of your video. So you have to remind them. Like we can't. Here's another thing I see people doing. And this is what has me fed up too. Y'all, we can't rely on the platform to do all the work for us. Although the platform 
states that it will do most of the work for us because it's built in all of these cool systems. It's not going to do it. It's not going to do it. Black people have already told y'all time and time again, the platform acts differently with us, especially once it identified that we're black. And for black people, most of the time we're putting the word black, African-American, you know what I'm saying? Diaspora, whatever. We're putting something in our titles or in our thumbnails that lets people know, hey, I'm a black person, if you couldn't just tell from the picture, right? So YouTube is, of course, of course, they say they're not. We know they are, baby. There's been way too many black creators in tech who have done the research, who have done the studies, who have done literally the live experiments on YouTube to show you this platform absolutely does know when you're black. This platform absolutely treats you differently when you're black. So here are the things you need to do. You know what I'm saying? You try to bypass those systems because, yes, artificial intelligence can absolutely be biased. Why? Because artificial intelligence gets, gets what? Gets what? Gets created by people, so human beings, who have biases, okay? And if you don't have people or if you don't have a diverse team in that room and you're creating this the AI that's going to be, you know basically the main tool that functions or that makes this platform function, then this platform is going to have biases that even may be detrimental to the platform itself. Like, y'all, come on. Now that we have the information, what are we going to do about it? And I think one of the things we need, we can do about it is to really stop niching ourselves down. I do not think it works. I don't think it works. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think it works. I think if you look at larger black YouTubers, and how they have progressed on the channel. On the channel. I ah! <laughs> manifest. How they have progressed um, on the platform. You can see that a lot of them kind of got out of their quote unquote niche and just started having constants, right? Like they just started being like, look, on Mondays, I'm gonna have this kind of content. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, this kind of content, whatever. And then maybe, you know, Friday is the day they just upload completely new content like something that's just like very different from what they do before um i think that works in your favor better because we are so varied anyway in our experiences to what benefit is it to any of us including yourselves to really just try to focus on one thing now hear me out hear me out if you do just love that one thing if you just love pottery right if you just love makeup like if you just really love that one thing of course by all means heavily focus on that one thing but i'm just saying if you at any point like not even let me rephrase when you feel like you want to make a different kind of video, you need to do that as soon as possible. Don't wait to meet a certain threshold of subscribers or views or likes or monetization or whatever to start doing that because trust me, it's gonna it's not gonna do what it needs to do for your channel. I feel like even with only my I'm about to hit 3K subs. Um, so I feel like even with the amount of subs I have right now, see, I don't really feel a way when I post content. It's kind of like mm, not what I'm typically posting um, if it doesn't perform quote unquote well because I also know that my subscribers know what I'm about. You know what I'm saying? They know that you're going to get all types of content over here. So I know that over time, over time, those videos that might have only gotten one or two views or 10 views or 100 views in their first week will eventually get a thousand views, 5k views, whatever. Like I have watched m now over seven of my videos, which to me is a big deal. I've watched over seven of my videos hit 5k plus views. So 5k, 7k, 10k, all the way up to 45,000 views. I have seen it. Um, and yeah, okay, sometimes the algorithm, I guess, picks up a video, but other times, no. Other times I think my subscribers are just like, man, let me finally watch this little video essay she did. Like, what's this about? And then they go, oh, I like it. You know, so like, that's what I feel. And I, and I, and I appreciate that because I just want to allow myself to be the version of myself, you know, that I am in that moment when I'm on this platform. I really just don't want to be like, okay, ugh, I'm going to be the commentary video channel. Ugh, I'm going to be the reviews. Ugh, I'm gonna be no, like whatever you like, you like, whatever you like, you like, of course, if something starts to work for you and the numbers start to come in by all means produce more of it. That's what happens for me. Um, when it came to my commentary, I started seeing like, oh, eh, y'all really eh, 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 rocking with the commentary. But I, I mm -mm. even when I started noticing I was gaining success that way, I said, that's this is great. But I am not going to just stay making this kind of content because 
I, first of all, I don't want to be a commentary channel. I want to be a channel that can provide commentary, right? But do not come here only for that because that is not all that you're going to get on my channel. So I like when people find my channel off a video. When they come to it, they go, oh, she has so much kind of content. Yes, I do have so much kind of content. I am not just this one person. But, but like, for real, y'all, y'all, I mean... Why do you think that we feel pressured into even making any kind of content? Like, <sighs> the black girl and luxury content and the push for it on YouTube, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's a really interesting case study to me because I don't ever think I've seen... So, here's the thing. I will log out of YouTube, clear my browser, like, do all of those things, and just go to, like, YouTube.com. Like, I'm a, you know visitor, don't have a channel, anything like that. And the black girl in luxury videos are the few videos that I see like being just like pushed by YouTube. And I'm like, hmm, why does YouTube in particular really like this sort of content from black people, specifically black women? Hmm, 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 hmm. 